have a new warning coming from a four-star Air Force general, General Mike Minahan, predicting that the United States would fight China in the next two years. That's a very startling statement. KT McFarlane, the perfect person here to talk to me about it. KT, is this alarmist or do you think uh, this is reasonable, this, this, this warning? Look, that's the general's job, Ashley. He's supposed to assume yeah. that the United States could be attacked by our adversaries at any minute. And he is his job is to prepare the United States so we can deter that attack, to defend against that attack. So he's really only doing his job. However, that being said, yeah, I mean, there is a timeline that the Chinese have. The Chinese president has said that he wants to, quote, unify China, in other words, bring Taiwan underneath the Chinese jurisdiction within the next couple of years. And the United States, if we've learned anything, especially Trey's reporting in Ukraine that you just um, showed, yeah. we the one thing we should have learned from Ukraine is you got to understand in advance, you have to make that, that calculation on the part of the Chinese that they would just decide, you, you know, Taiwan isn't worth it. Taiwan is going to be too hard. Because the Russians told the Chinese that, oh, it's going to be really easy. we got a great military. NATO is going to fold. The Ukrainian yeah. army isn't going to fight back. And none of those things happen. So here we have Russia going on to year two of a war that they thought they'd win in three weeks. If we can change China's calculation by having a better alliance system, a more prepared military, a more prepared Taiwan, then China's going to think twice about an invasion. I'm glad you said that, KT, because my follow-up question is, are we properly prepared? We have a, an Air Force general sounding the, the warning. As you say, that's his job, but are we properly prepared? N look, every war game of the United States versus China fighting over Taiwan, every war game that's played out, whether it's from think tanks or the Pentagon, the United States loses that war. So, no, we're not adequately prepared. How would we become Ugh. adequately prepared? Well, we would rebuild our military, especially our Navy, and especially in the Pacific. We've drawn down a lot of the American military to, to support Ukraine, but we haven't sort of ramped it up to deter in Asia. The other thing we could do is to have an alliance with the countries that are most important to us in the region, Japan, Korea, the United States, as a Pacific power, Philippines, Australia, and maybe even India, to have not only an economic alliance, but a security alliance against China. And frankly, the thing that we could do that would be the most important is to end the American war on fossil fuels so that we would become the dominant yeah. economic power, not only in Asia, but in Europe. I want to get back to Ukraine, if we can. Uh, North Korea, I guess, you know, no big surprise, condemning the decision by the U.S. to supply Ukraine with advanced tanks to help fight off Russia. I mean, we don't care what North Korea thinks, do we? But getting right. those tanks there quickly is key. Yeah, and, and so the United States, Germany, the United Kingdom, and Poland have all said they're going to send tanks, yep. probably 100, 200 tanks, to help the Ukrainians fight off the Russians in what's thought to be a new spring offensive. The Ukrainians have now asked for long-range missiles. Presumably, Ukraine is going to take the war to Russia. This war is escalating, and it's escalating to the extent that the Russians, you know, everybody who thinks, well, the way Ukraine wins is that Putin goes home in defeat and humiliation, and they get mm. out of Ukraine. Well, Putin doesn't survive if that happens. He gets replaced, probably by a more aggressive um, leader. And the, and the fight, as Trey has just pointed out, is that it's targeting civilian infrastructure. That's not what the Russians were doing nine months ago. Now they are deliberately targeting civilian infrastructure. They're going to go for... Bro they'd rather crush and destroy the whole country of Ukraine than to admit defeat and go home and, and humiliation. I mean, how much more can the West do to help at least turn the tide a little? Because as you said before, Katie, a war of attrition, the, the, the Russia's going to win. They have far more right. in the way of resources, especially in, in fighting forces. It's a no-win situation for Ukraine. So what can the West do? Well, there'd be a couple of things. I mean, in the Reagan administration, where I worked, mm -hmm. the re the, we used to our great advantage our economic superiority. So that if we could, again, if the United States becomes energy dominant, we set the price of oil and natural gas. It falls because we do it so cheaply. Right. The Russians are bankrupt. The Russians can't afford to keep going on in a war of attrition. They'll be broke. That's the first thing we could do. And the second mm. is to understand that Ukraine may not win the war that they hope to win, but they could win the peace. And the way they win the peace is by once the war stops, 
then Ukraine becomes fully integrated into the Western economy and to the Western political system and uh, probably into NATO, whereas Russia's broke. Wow. Always terrific stuff, Katie. I could talk to you all day long. We don't have that pleasure or that uh, license, but thank you so much, as always, for joining us this morning. Thank you. Thank you, Ash. Uh,